Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining our diagnostic training session today. If you have any questions throughout the session, if you're joining us on Zoom, just look at the top of the bottom of your screen. Wherever your Zoom controls are, you should see a little button that says Q&A. Click on that, type in your question, I'll get to those at the end of the session. If you're joining us on YouTube, just please feel free to use the live chat function if you're watching us live. Otherwise, feel free to leave a comment if you're watching the recording. Uh, my name is Jason Gabrinas. I'm one of Snap-on's National Diagnostic Technical Trainers. Been in the training department the last, oh, 10, 11, I think I'm starting my 11th year now, uh, traveling around North America, helping techs and shop owners get the most out of their diagnostic equipment. Before I did that, it was a couple of years as a diagnostic sales rep with Snap-on, so I had about 30 different franchisees I worked with, as well as the shops that they serviced in order to help everyone get the most out of their diagnostic needs. Then before I did that, it was eight years at Subaru, so worked in a dealership and over time, I guess, just became that default dyad guy in the shops. So I always ended up with the drivability problems, the intermittent problems, the weird wiring problems that would show up on those cars. And that's really where I cut my diagnostic teeth, was trying to figure out all those weird head scratcher type cars that would come in. The and before that, a bunch of other miscellaneous wrenching jobs. Been a little over 25 years under hood experience for me. So our topic today is Security Link update. And there is a major update that we'll be getting to in a little bit. Uh, there is a whole new couple of manufacturers, actually, that fall under one umbrella that we will be starting tomorrow, January 24th. We will be covering those vehicles. And as far as we know, we are the first to market with that, too. So all good things we're going to talk about here. So Security Link, if you don't know what that is, that is uh, kind of Snap-on's umbrella for covering all the different secured gateway schemes that manufacturers are using. And they're, they're pretty varied at the, at the moment. I don't really think there's any sort of standardization. And uh, over time, maybe there won't be any standardization, hard to say. Uh, but we're trying our best to keep on, keep on course with these and keep ahead of it before it actually shows up in any cars you're working on. Uh, sometimes we, we might have a little bit of waiting period for it from the manufacturer, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, but like I said, there is a big update, so definitely stay tuned throughout this presentation. We'll, we'll be talking about it. But let's back up a little bit. Where did all of this begin? Because really, we haven't been talking about secured functions, secured gateways on vehicles for that long. Uh, back in 2015, there are these hackers that are, were around. And there's two different types of hackers. There's uh, white hat hackers and black hat hackers. The black hat hackers, of course, the bad guys. Those are the ones that will be uh, you know, trying to steal your credit card information, bank information, stuff like that. White hat hackers, on the other hand, and, and there's numerous varieties of them. Uh, but usually what they do is they, tr they go around and they try and find glitches, vulnerabilities in, in uh, systems, software systems. And then they will inform them whoever is in charge of that system, be, you know, maybe Google. You know, they try to hack into Google and they find a vulnerability and say, hey, Google, here's a uh, here's an issue that we found. Well, they were hacking around, playing around with CAN bus messages on cars, and they found out they can take over a Jeep just by knowing their IP address of the Jeep. And of course, a lot of our vehicles are rolling, <laughs> rolling computers now, and they all have IP addresses because they're hooked up to uh, you know, over cell networks, a lot of them. So they tell Chrysler this, Jeep this, whatever, and uh, seemed to me like they really weren't listening right away. Um, so they decided to partner up with this magazine called Wired Magazine. And uh, in, back in July, they released a, an article about this. And what they did is they have one of the people from the magazine driving the car. And they, the hackers were sitting in a, you know, a hotel room somewhere down the street. Uh, of course, it was like an open area, maybe like an old runway or something like that. I, I, it's, been, it's been a while since I read the article. But what they were able to do is they were able to take over the vehicle remotely using a laptop, just sending commands over the Internet. Right. Uh, so they got in through the radio and did that and ended up actually, as you can see here, drove the vehicle into a ditch. Now, uh, obviously, that's an issue because what would happen if a bad guy got into a car and, and started doing that at highway speeds? for example. So obviously something needed to be done. And actually right after that, Chrysler uh, came out with a, a fix for it. Now this fix, however, uh, is contained on a USB stick at the dealership. So the customer would have to take their vehicle back to the dealership, 
and get it updated using that USB stick physically. They couldn't update over the air back then, I guess. Um, so how many of those customers went back to get their car updated? I don't know. Uh, I would imagine not all of them. So there, I'm sure there are still vehicles out there that are vulnerable. So they decided, well, we need something more of a permanent solution than just updating the radio. So they came out with the secured gateway box. And this was the first in North America uh, that we're really aware of that you know would, would disallow outside interference. So it's just this little module right there. It's right there on the wiring diagram. And you'll see there's the OBD2 connector and there's the radio, all the can lines off the radio. The first stop any of those things make, either from the scan tool or from the radio, is in the secure vehicle gateway model. And then it allows, if certain conditions are met, it allows access to the rest of the vehicle outside of that. So think of it like a firewall router uh, in the vehicle. So you need to be able to get through this security uh, this layer of security in order to even communicate with the rest of the vehicle. So as far as Fiat, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, all of those vehicles under, I guess, Stellantis umbrella now, um, as far as when it's locked and you don't have access, it's locked. You can read stuff, but you can't do anything else. You can't clear codes, you can't do bi-directional controls, you can't do programming, coding, functional tests, or special functions. With it unlocked, It'll just behave like any other vehicle that doesn't have a secure gateway on it. It'll support any of the tests, reading and clearing codes, resetting cameras on ADOS and, and things like that. Um, other manufacturers, however, do not take this all or nothing approach. I can still get in and do some things on the vehicle. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Sometimes it's just certain special functions are behind it. And then the rest of it's you know pretty well open. So as far as the Stellantis umbrella of vehicles, it, it boils down to this. You really can't do anything without it. So how does it work? Overall, at a high level, this is how most manufacturers approach it. There might be little nuances here and there, but you know, overall, high level, here's how it works. So you got your scan tool and you got your vehicle. Scan tool is going to go into the vehicle. It's kind of first thing it's going to see is that module. And the first thing the module is going to do is, okay, so you're trying to get in. So here's my secure ID. Sends it back to the tool. The tool then takes that secure ID plus the tool's ID, which would be the serial number. And then if necessary, a username and password, depending on what the, uh, what the manufacturer requires. So some sort of other information goes up to the server, the cloud. If everything matches and everything looks okay, it says, okay, you're authenticated, sends down an unlock code. Then the, the uh, scan tool then sends that unlock code to the module. And then the module says, all right, all looks good. You're in, let's submit. So it looks kind of like this. So there it is requesting authorization. There's a couple ID numbers and then uh, it sends it back and it says, all right, you're unlocked and it lets you in, right? Easy enough. And then it says available up on the top of the screen. However, if something goes wrong or something is missing in that batch of information that's necessary, it'll still do the same thing, pings the module. Module sends back secure ID, sends it up to the cloud. If one of those things is not correct, either the username and password is not right or the tool is not registered uh, with the cloud service or the secure ID for some reason doesn't match, if son one of those things is out of whack or one of those things is not in the right place, it says, nope, sorry, can't authenticate, sends it back down a fail message, and then it says, nope, sorry, cannot get into the view. There's a couple different ways this will present itself on the tool. Uh, first one's here, it just says authorization denied. All right, we can go in there and it's just going to say, you know, you, you can't get in at all. And then it'll say limited up on the top. Some vehicle manufacturer secured diagnostic requests may not be available. Also, we could do a uh, device not associated with profile. So if the device is not registered in your Snap-on profile, if it's not in there, which should be one of the first things you do anyways, but if it's not, uh, then you would have this issue here, device not associated with profile. You'd simply have to uh, put the device information in there and you're good to go. How about another thing? What if we don't have Wi-Fi? So it'll still ping the module. It'll still send the secure ID back. And then it'll send it up, secure ID, tool ID, username and password, tries to send it up anyways, but then it'll get to the point where, oh, no, no Wi-Fi connection. 
I can't communicate. So to do your initial link to the vehicle, <coughs> the initial connection to the vehicle, uh, you do need to be on Wi-Fi. You need to have current software and all that. And it's going to look something like this. And you see the Wi-Fi is off. It won't even really do anything. It just says, you know, failed to start because Wi-Fi is off. And it gives you that message too. So at least, it, you know, it's plain, plain English. You know, Wi-Fi is required. Make sure Wi-Fi is on and you're connected. So let's run down the manufacturers. Now, this is mainly U.S. Some of these manufacturers are also global. Uh, so they will have a global um, way to get in. As far as FCA is concerned, it is different when it's over in Europe versus over in uh, the U.S. and Canada. Uh, also in Australia, it's uh, actually Australia kind of uses the same system as they use in, in the U.K. Uh, and that actually goes through Stellantis themselves. But as far as the U.S. and you know, most of these are true around the world anyways, current software on tool. And that is a manufacturer mandate that is not a snap-on mandate. I know I get asked it all the time. So the manufacturer requires that if you want to be able to access these secured functions on their vehicles, you have to have current software on your scan tool because they don't want to have somebody, you know, a couple years out of date. Maybe the protocols aren't the same anymore. If there is some sort of change made throughout, you know, we'll update it, of course. Uh, so the manufacturer wants to avoid that. So they just make sure it's current. Of course, we need the internet connection because we need to be able to ping the server. In the U.S., like I said, we need a current auto auth account and the tool needs to be registered with auto auth as well. So that means that the, the account needs to be paid up $50 a year for the basic account. Uh, and the tool also, like I said, does need to be plugged in there. Tool needs to be registered in your Snap-on account as well. We, we saw that one failure message uh, a couple screens back where it says the tool is not associated with your profile. So you got to make sure it's in there. And then your auto auth username and password also has to be registered on your Snap-on account as well. And we'll, and we'll walk through uh, you know some of these things in a little bit. Uh, Ford. Ford doesn't really need any outside inter, uh, interjection from anything else. They don't use a third party to authorize it. It's all kind of done in the background fairly seamlessly. As long as you have current software on your tool and you have an internet connection as, and the tool needs to be registered in your Snap-on account as well, because that's how it kind of passes through. Uh, as long as those three criteria are met, you'll be able to do secured functions on fours. And that's the US and the UK. Um, as far as Australia is concerned, as, as far as I know that is coming soon, it's different licenses for different territories, right? So it's not quite there yet over in uh, Australia. Next one is Nissan. Now, Nissan, I thought, and a lot of us thought, that this would be the next one. And it's not. It's not the next one because paperwork is still tied up. Uh, but I can tell you what we're going to be seeing with it. They are also using auto auth, and this is going to be global. This is already available over in Europe. Over in Europe and UK, they use auto auth. Same auto auth that we use over here in the States. Um, so in that case, this is what we would expect in North America as well. Once it rolls out and it could be any day now, uh, but current software on the tool, once again, internet connection, once again, current auto auth account, once again, the tool needs to be registered with auto auth. The tool needs to be registered in your snap on account and the auto auth username and password needs to be registered in your snap on account as well. So if you're in North America and you already have auto auth and all that stuff set up for Chrysler and, and so on. All you're going to need to do is just click the little button on Nissan that says, I want to add this. And then there's probably some, uh, you know, EULA and user license agreement stuff. You got to, you got to kind of cruise through, check a box and you're good to go. As far as we know, no additional fee either from auto auth. So as far as we're aware, auto auth will manage it, but whatever manufacturers are using auto auth for that flat, whatever fee you're paying because there's different tiers now too but the base fee fifty dollars uh for the basic account right so uh that's good news so it's not that they're not going to be really nickel and diamond yet as far as we know right now uh so that's a good thing all right so on our website if you go into your user account uh there is a link that says coming soon learn more and then this is the verbiage that we put up there so many oems are starting to introduce secure gateway modules that restrict access the certain functions on newer model vehicles, unless you have authorized OEM credentials. Nissan is the latest manufacturer to release their secure gateway to the aftermarket, um, et cetera, et cetera. If uh, you see the screen below, then we're ready and waiting for Nissan's service. So there's gonna there's a screen that I cut off. 
Uh, now, here is what I was talking about earlier. It is still possible to read codes, data, and clear codes without unlocking a secure vehicle gateway on Nissan's. OEM credentials are only needed to perform certain functional tests, and I don't even think it's all of them. So you still could do bi-directional controls and not have to worry about it. Uh, there's just certain functions on the vehicle that it's required, right? So it says some diagnostic requests are locked by the vehicle manufacturer. Make sure you've completed all the steps. Uh, and then in here, it says, this is on Nissan once again, like I said, 2023 Nissan Sentra, so a pretty basic vehicle. But for vehicles that are unable to have a secure vehicle gateway unlocked, diagnostic test mode can be manually enabled. Diagnostic test mode will enable the scan tool to perform some additional functionality for many systems. And it tells you how to do it. And it also tells you you need to go into the eight channel CAN gateway system and read as to whether what mode it's in to see if you're right. So uh, in this case, it says restricted mode, that would change to um, whatever it said on that last page, what did it say? Uh, diagnostic test mode or intermediate, it would say. So that would switch once it's, once it's in. So that's Nissan. And that is once again, coming soon, still coming soon. Like I said, we thought we'd be there by now, but Nissan's holding up a paperwork. So now drum roll, please. The next manufacturer that goes live tomorrow. So this is uh January 23rd, Tuesday, January 23rd today. On January 24th, this will be live globally. This is a global solution for this. And uh, as, like I said, as far as we're aware, we are the only ones in the market at this time that offer access to VAG. So Volkswagen, Audi Group. Saying it's very similar requirements. There's one little weird difference that's in there, and we'll talk more about that. So current software on tool, of course, as other manufacturers have said. Internet connection, because it has to authorize over the internet. The tool needs to be registered in your Snap-on account so it can access that. And then you need to create a profile access code. That is a four-digit code created by you. It can be anything. It can be four zeros. It can be one, two, three, four. It can be whatever. It just needs to be four digits. So all that needs to be done. So profile access code. So we're going to go through just a few different steps uh, that you may need to take in slides. And then I'm actually going to go live on our development environment so I can show you what it would look like kind of more realistic, you know, more real time. So in this case, we're in the profile manager. So you are probably familiar with this if you've done any work with, you know, FCA or what have you. Um, but if we look down here, we have Volkswagen group and we have a little plus sign. So we click the plus sign, it's gonna add it in. We have to fill out some information in there uh, while we do it. If you don't have all of your profile information set up, it's gonna ask for whatever is necessary. When that is done, uh, it's going to give you this, and it says we sent an email verification request to whatever your registered email address is. So whatever email address you have in your profile, on your technician profile, it is going to send an email there. So what I would suggest is double check your profile first before you go through and add this just to make sure you can still access that email address. Because if the email address can't be verified, then you can't access it. So it's going to pop up, it'll hit done. And then you'll notice underneath the account here, it says email verification required. Once, uh, you know, once it sends the email, you will get an email in here. It says action required. And this is what the email is going to look like. And all you got to do is click that verify email box. When you do that, you can go back to your account and you'll notice it doesn't say email needs to be verified. Now, what happens if I forget my profile access code that I made? What happens if I want to change my profile access code? That's fine. On your account information page, you'll see it says profile access code right there. So that's a new box that will show up. And then all you got to do is just you know type over it. And you can just put in whatever your new, your new uh, profile access code, whatever you want. All right. So um, in this case, we'll see that some systems may require access to manufacturer secure diagnostic requests. And once again, this is a case by case kind of test by test almost basis. You don't have to unlock it unless you're doing one of these requests where it's asking you for this profile access code. It's not everything. You can clear codes, you can read data and all that. Some certain special functions are locked behind. So in the case where you do need to log into it, it's going to pop up on the screen. It's going to say, what is your profile access code? You need to enter that in and then hit OK. Once you've done that, as long as it matches the one that's on the website, you're in. Good to go. 
also when you leave the controller uh by the way so how much time do i have how much time do i have when i have it unlocked so um as far as volkswagen is concerned you have 90 minutes of key on time turn the key off in the middle the timer pauses turn the key back on uh, and go back into that same module you have 90 minutes of unlock time when you go to leave the module it's going to ask you do you want to leave it unlocked you're going to come back in here in a little bit, or do you want to lock it and just, you know, be done with it? So it will tell you the controller is still unlocked with however many minutes are remaining. Uh, if you wish to leave it open, uh, leave it unlocked. We'll, we'll set a code uh, that will not clear until the controller is locked. So you, you can just lock it as, as when you're logging out. You don't have to worry about it, and you'll be good to go there. So there's just a few little weird little things that, that show up with that. It's fairly simple to get it set up. And once it is set up, it's fairly, you know, uh, seamless in the background, so to say. Um, so those are your main pieces, the four digit personal access code. And then uh, when it requests it, you have to enter that onto the, uh, on, into the scan tool as well. So to sum, summarize before we go live on the tool, uh, here is as far as what we have right now, uh, so FCA US, you need uh, for all the manufacturer need current software, all the manufacturer need an internet connection. And the internet connection is for the initial hooking up to the vehicle. Once it's done and you're in the controller, you can leave Wi-Fi. Unlike some other even factory tools, you can go on a road test. You can drive down the street. It'll keep it um, open for you. Uh, on the Volkswagen, it is that 90 minute limit. But uh, as far as Ford, FCA, going to be open. All right, you can you can leave Wi-Fi as long as you've done that initial handshake, so to say. Uh, for FCA, as we know, third-party account. Same with Nissan; they're both going to use auto off. And then with Volkswagen, does not need a third-party account, but it does need that profile access. So let's go live on some things. Uh, let's see. First thing I want to talk about. Is... All right, first thing I want to do, I did get a question on um, YouTube here about how do I even set up an account? So the easiest way to set up an account is go to altusdrive.com. And actually, I'll plug that in the chat as well. All right, and I'll put it in chat on Zoom as well. This is not... Um, Volkswagen is not available until tomorrow, J January 24th, but just so you know, uh, but I will put that in the chat for everybody to copy and paste if they need to. And then if you need to create an account, just go to create individual account. You'll go in there and uh, there's many other videos that we have on this. So I'm not going to belabor the point here, but you just enter all your information in there. And uh, it'll bring you to where uh, bring you to where you need to go. Once I do have it set up, though, I'm gonna go play in a sandbox here. Should open, yes. Okay. So once you've done that, you'll log in. Where I was. You'll log in and it will bring you to your profile page. Notice how it has the profile access code down here. So if I needed to change that, I can just type over this and I can change it. Like I also said, double check your email address. Make sure it is correct. Make sure you can access, still access that email address. Maybe you created this account five years ago because it's been around for a while. Uh, so maybe you've created an account a while ago and you don't remember the email address or you don't have that email address anymore, change it. Make sure it's correct in your profile before you go over here. Verify everything's correct once you've set up your account. Next thing you need to do is go into device management and you're gonna wanna add a device. If you already have a device in there, you don't need to worry about it. Uh, so you go to add device. Now, how do I get these numbers right here? So the serial number, the pin and the code, oh, how am I gonna get those? So on the scan tool, You'd go into system settings or tools, depending on what you have for a tool. It's in the same spot on all of them. You're gonna go in there, you're gonna go to get connected. 
And then it's going to give you those ID numbers right there. So serial number, pin, and code. Uh, it has to be connected to the internet when it generates this. Otherwise, it does it does it won't work. And you cannot leave this page. If you leave this page, notice how we got 303E105. If I go back in there, 8C9, see it's totally different every single time. It just generates a rolling code every time you go on this page. So you have to leave this screen open on your scan tool in order to do this. So I would recommend using a totally different browser, uh, a totally different tool. All right. So I can't do this because this is a sandbox, so it's it's, it's not connected to it. Um, but you would punch in the serial number, the pin, and the code, give it a give the tool a name, and then it would show up there. Next thing, I want to set up set up my account with the manufacturer. So I'm going to come down to security link here. And you'll see we have numerous options. Now, pay no attention to Renault. Renault obviously doesn't exist in North America. So you know, that, you know, that won't even show up in North America. Over in Europe, it will show up. Um, but we have FCA North America. If I wanted to do that, I can add my credentials here. Username and password, which has to match uh, auto auth. If I don't have an auto auth account, I can just click right here. And I can go sign up, go to register and sign up. If I wanted to, we try to make it as easy as possible. And then you just need to check off the boxes and then you're good to go. For um, Volkswagen, this will show up, like I said, tomorrow or January 24th, depending on when you uh, when you see this. So Volkswagen Group is going to be down here. And then I hit plus and add it in. What you really need to do is you need to go through. Now, this may look a little different if you haven't added all your information. So you need to have, make sure all your personal information's in there and you need to make sure your shop information's in there. And then it'll bring you to this EULA page. You can read through the license agreements if you wish. And then there's two checkboxes. Now, here's another caveat with Volkswagen. If the scan tool is used by multiple users, it is required that each user register the scan tool with their own technician profile prior to use. If your scan tool is lost or stolen, please notify Snap-on, etc. Um, so as of a couple of years ago, you were able to associate a device with multiple personal accounts. So you say I had a shop tool, right? And I wanted to be able to do that. Um, so, um, I need to make sure each of those users are registered and have their own personal profile access code. Check the box. And then this is for privacy policy, et cetera. Check the box, hit save. And then it's going to say we sent an email verification request and then hit done. Now, I can't actually verify the email. Once again, like I said, it's a test environment. You would go to your email in that case, hit the little button on the verification. You can come back here and make sure it works. Then the next time you go into the tool, it would give you that little pop-up window where you enter the profile access code and you're good to go. All right. And then the other uh, manufacturers. So FCA International, so that's overseas over in Europe and in uh, Australia. That is managed by Fiat Technical Information. It's actually Stellantis now, I think it links you to. Oh, uh, yeah. So Stellantis, just technically Fiat Technical Information. But Stellantis, you would have to create an account, et cetera. That's for over there. Um, from what I hear, it is a pretty not great experience going through them. So Snap-on has set up a way where you can actually do it through us in Europe. U.S. doesn't do it that way um, just because it goes through auto so you don't need to worry about it. Um, and then it's, as well, you can see Ford is not even listed in here because it's not necessary to do anything extra other than have the tool link into there. So there you go. That is the long and short of our update and we are where we are at our current state of affairs mid-January, mid to late January, 2024. It may change. It may change in the future, right? So um, Nissan will be added for sure uh, in the future very soon. Just don't know when. Once again, waiting on paperwork, waiting on paperwork. So with that, if you have any questions and you showed up late, uh, please make sure you type them. If you're on Zoom, type them in the q and I'll get to them in a little bit. If you're watching on YouTube, just uh, make sure you use the live chat if you're watching live. Otherwise, leave a comment underneath. I know we're probably going to get a decent amount of questions on this. So just be aware um, that you can ask the questions and we're here to answer your questions. So with that, let me 
go over to talk about what we're talking about next week, and then we'll get the question. Uh, so next week, we are continuing this OEM-specific training uh, set of courses that we're doing um, throughout the year this year. Uh, last week, we did Ford. We're doing this this week. Next week, we're doing Toyota. It's going to be kind of an every other week thing. Uh, so next week is Toyota. So we're going to talk about the ins and outs of Toyota, a little bit of history, top sellers, uh, top codes, top issues with those vehicles that you might want to be aware of. Once again, we started this series because um, you might work on some vehicles and you don't work on other brands. And then what happens when this other brand you don't work on comes into the shop? It's good to be aware of the little idiosyncrasies between the different manufacturers. So same time, same place. Come join me, 6 and 9 Eastern, every Tuesday in uh, in North America. Anyways, it's Tuesday. Uh, go to snapon.com slash OT if you want to register and join on Zoom. Otherwise, uh, the 6 p.m. Eastern class goes to YouTube, youtube.com slash snapon diagnostics. If you are watching on YouTube, please make sure you like and subscribe. Um, the 9 p.m. Eastern class goes to my Facebook page, so it's facebook.com slash snap on jason all one word go give me a follow over there as well if you want to see any of the previous episodes in this series and there is a whole boatload of them they are all free and they're all about 30 45 minutes long anywhere from intro to ados to oem specific training on ford all of that and everything in between everything listed on the page 78 different episodes plus other stuff is available on the uh, youtube channel as well but there is a playlist for live training uh, so once again youtube.com slash snap on diagnostics go check it out over there uh, before I do get the questions, let me just make sure I mention my buddy Keith, who also does free diagnostic training every week, uh, 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, 4.30 Pacific on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So Wednesday, it is on Zeus and Zeus Plus. Thursday is on Apollo and Triton. Uh, he goes through everything from setup functions. Uh, he does talk about Security Link a little bit, not quite as in-depth as I did today, but he does mention it. Uh, and then he goes code to completion through Fast Track Intelligent Diagnostics, tells you all about you know, how it works, what, how it's going to help you as a technician. Then he takes about a five minute break. And then after that break, he goes through the scope and meter functions on the tool as well. So if you want to sign up, that is Zoom only. It's kind of designed to have the tool in front of you. Follow along as you go. Uh, Snapon.com slash OT to register for that. All right, let's get to questions. I got a couple on. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's see. Uh, Anthony Nofi raised his hand. So, Anthony, if you do have a question, just type it into the chat, please. Um, otherwise, I, I won't know what your question is because I can't unmute your mic. Uh, Anonymous asks, what year VAG vehicles require the PIN code? It's kind of spotty. Um, I haven't seen it any earlier than 21. So I would suspect 21 and newer, it's going to get more and more prevalent as we go up. Um, there might be a 20 in there somewhere that I haven't come across yet, but as far as I know, uh, the only ones I've seen haven't been any older than 2020. So those are the vehicles you would need it for. Uh, Simon says, just tuned in, have an Altus account and forgot my password. What do I do? So go to login. Uh, let me just. So go and log in, go to altusdrive.com. And then go to log in and then do forgot password. You can reset. There. And if you forgot your username, you can click there. As well. uh, so there's a way to recover. It's going to send you to send it to whatever email you registered with. So if you don't have that email address anymore, you might need to start over fresh with a fresh email address as well. Um, but if you do forget your password, you can just simply uh, reset it right there. Uh, and it'll let you in. Hopefully that helps. All right, got a couple up on a new one. Okay, I uh, got a couple up on YouTube as well. Nick checking in from the UK. Welcome, thanks for joining. Uh, let's see, Colonel Buckshot asks, once you log in with FCA and auto off, can you go on a test drive without losing connectivity? Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, I did mention that after he asked the question. So hopefully that did answer your question. Uh, if you didn't hear that part, yes, you can. You can go through and uh, you just have to be on Wi-Fi for that initial unlock. Once you're done with that, you can go on a road test and do whatever you need to do. Unlike the factory tool from what I'm told. Uh, and then Alex said, how can I set up my Snap-on account? I did cover that thanks to that question. Uh, so we did that in there. Uh,
Let's see. Hello, like the th uh, Keith is saying, uh, thank you for the class. Thanks to the people that put ECU connection on the new update, a game changer. All right. Uh, Chris McConnell is when will Renault be going live? I'm not sure. I would imagine since I believe they're tied in with Nissan, right? So I believe it's probably the same type of deal as it is Nissan in the U.S. It's just paperwork at this point. Um, not sure how they're going to be approaching it over there. Now, that's Europe only anyways. Uh, so I'm not 100% schooled up familiar with how it's going to work over there. Um, but as of right now, not sure when that's going to happen. Could be any time. All right. Uh, let's see. Nick says, can't wait for next week's training. Let's see. Brett says, when trying to actuate certain outputs, such as fuel pumps, solenoids, et cetera, on my Zeus, I get a lot of error screens. Could this be because of secure vehicle gateway? It is very possible that it could be due to that because it depends on the vehicle. And I will look at your email later uh, and I'll just reply to your email. But, um, if you're not current software, if you're not on Wi-Fi, it won't let you do some of those tests. So you may very well be running into it. So I'll look at those error screens and I will reply to your email. With that, Brett. So uh, good question there. Uh, let's see uh, what happens after 90 minutes expire on the new security link. So it's only on Volkswagen Audi group. And uh, if it expires, you're just going to have to go back in and unlock. It, basically, it's just going to give you it's going to say session expired or something of that nature. Then you just have to type in type in your PAC again, and you're good. So that shouldn't be anything to worry about. It's just just they had to limit it somewhere somehow, so they limited it to the night. And this is all once again. This is all from Volkswagen, and we had to jump through a lot, a lot of hoops to get this done. So uh, you know, like Keith said on YouTube, I definitely appreciate the folks that got this going uh, for us as well because we went through a lot of. A lot of different hoops in order to make this happen. So, and as far as I know, like I said, we're the only ones out right now that have it. So that is a very good thing. Um, I'm sure everybody, I'm sure eventually other manufacturers or other, other aftermarket tools will have it. But as of right now, we're the only game in town. So. All right. Looks like we have cleared the board. I guess that means I probably did a decent job explaining it. Once again, if you do have any questions, you can always, uh, if you're on Zoom after the fact, you can always um, uh, just email, reply to the email and the confirmation, and they'll get the questions to me. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube after the fact, you can just uh, leave a comment. And I do try to check those. I need to check them more often, but I you know, try to check them uh, as often as I can. Uh, let's see. Uh, Anthony Nofi says, yeah, the 90 minute timeout sounds like a problem if you're in the middle of programming. Yeah, I could, could see that as being an issue. I'm um, not sure how they get around that with as far as like the JBox uh, reflashing goes. It might be different when you're doing a flash. Um, it may know that you're trying to do a flash. Uh, I can't confirm with that. But as far as this access, this is through the scan tool anyway. So there won't really be any flashing going on with the scan tool anyway. Oh, but yeah, I could definitely see that as an issue if if it's not handled differently uh, when it comes to flashing. All right. Thanks for all the love on YouTube, by the way, too. Uh, with that, looks like we have cleared the board on both sides. So with that, get into my thank you. Thank you very much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend a little bit of time with me. Hopefully we've um, giving you as much information as you need to be successful with uh, unlocking Volkswagen Audi gateways and the other gateways as well. I just know, you know, Volkswagen Audi's top of mind right now because that's the one that's coming out next. So, uh, as I said, it'll be available pretty much as soon as you wake up on Wednesday morning. If you're in the United States or Europe, uh, should be good to go and ready to go. They're telling me probably midnight Pacific time is probably going to roll out. So, um, yeah, uh, set up your account, get it out of the way in the morning and you won't have to worry about it again. Just make sure you don't forget that PAC and make sure your email address is correct. So with that, thank you for taking your time. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next week for OEM specific training on Toyota. Um, and hopefully you join me for any of these other classes. If you do have any questions, like I said, contact us, uh, have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend and take care.